Okay, it is six o'clock. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Would you all please rise for the pledge of allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Seeing as this is the Quarry Valley uh, March reorganization meeting, the first item on the agenda is to nominate a board chair. I'd like to open the floor for any nominations. Hold on, Lisa. Do we have a, a second? Any other nominations? We haven't approved all the trip small boards yet, so we're operating. We have to take a second. Okay. Well, second Lisa's nomination. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Do we have any other nominations? Uh, I nominate Linda Smith. Okay. Do we have a second? This is Kristen. I'll second if nobody else did. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, so we have then a nomination for uh, Lisa Leiser, and we have a nomination for Linda Smith. Okay, uh, so we need to take a vote. Uh, it'd probably be easy to do a roll call as opposed to show of hands, so I'll just go around the room. Uh, in order, we'll begin with uh, Sarah. Uh, Lisa. Okay. Uh, Re Rebecca. Oh, Lisa. I'm sorry. I'm going to okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Captain. I'm going to recuse myself from voting because we are related, and I don't want any part of that to be okay. an issue, so I'm just going to recuse myself. Okay. Uh, Linda? Um, I'll vote for me. Okay. Uh, Tom? I'll go with Lisa. Lisa, Mike? Uh, Lisa? I'll vote for myself. And Kristen Frost. No. And Jessica. Right. So I, I didn't hear Kristen. She said Linda. Okay, thank you. Okay, and Jessica. Uh, Lisa, please. Okay, so just to make sure we have a break. So to Sarah, we have. Make sure you don't mess this up. We have Sarah, we have Rebecca. All right. Catherine and Steen, we have Linda, Tom, Mike, Lisa, we have Jessica, and we've decided it was two. <clears throat> so by a vote of five to three with one abstention, uh, Lisa is our board chair. Uh, thank you. And I now turn the meeting over to, to Lisa. Uh, nominations are open for vice chair. I'll nominate Mike Moser. Kristen, this is Kristen. I'll second that. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Clerk. I'll name nominate Kristen. Is there a second? Second. 
The second by Tom. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. The remaining members of the board are Sarah, Jessica, Rebecca, Catherine, Linda, and Tom. Uh, GRCSU voting members. So I'll be, I'm a voting member, and we historically have taken one voting member from each district. So each district um, is represented at the SU. So Wes Rutland. Mike. Okay. And Fulton. Uh, Linda's can do it this year. Okay. Great. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> to set up a regular meeting schedule, we talked about this a little bit while we were going through budgets, that um, the objective is to have our SU meeting the first week of the month and all other district board meetings the second week of the month. So um, we will be meeting on Thursdays because we are the last board to meet and Thursday, Thursday or Friday. And so I'm thinking Thursday is a better choice than Friday. So we will meet Thursday, the second Thursday at six o'clock. And then the question also is if board members want to continue to meet here, since we want to be able to um, offer the hybrid as an option, or if board members want to start meeting in um, school buildings, and if that happens, then um, I guess we'll have to rely on Greg to see what that looks like to continue with the hybrid. So is there- Can we meet at West Rutland? So it's halfway between you and us? um we could the problem we found is that we usually um displace people out of the cap or not the cafeteria out of the library when we meet at six o'clock and so that's been the disruption over there we will be though when we go into our new digs so this would be a short term yeah yeah well, so it'll be short term because we're going to be into our new yeah. place so yes we will be eventually over there yeah that'd be great yeah. okay so <laughs> until Thursday. Thursday, because we're all meeting um, the second week of the month. So Chris has all the meetings one week. So then the third, the bottom of the month, in case something should happen or there's an issue, then um, we can meet again. And we're the last board to reorganize since voting. And Thursday is the day that is left. So that's why we're at Thursday. So would it be okay if we continued to meet here until let's say August? Would that be a September? I would say uh, September would be a time to move. Okay. So I would make a motion that we do it till September and then reevaluate, see how we where we are at as far as how we change goes. Okay. So that we would meet here for for all our meetings until um, September of 2023, and then we'll re or uh, reevaluate. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? And we can still have virtual meetings like we've had in the past because with the legislature, we can have meetings without listing a. Um, physical location. So we did have a couple of those. So it's nice to have that option as well. All right, no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Okay. So by majority. Uh, to set the date of our annual board retreat, if no one um, objects, you can all look at your calendar and come in April. And let's try to look at a time in July. And uh, we could do 
the meeting in July if people want, or if there's uh, another time in July. So we can we can set that at the April meeting. The annual meeting would be February. No, it has to be at the bottom of the month. That, that's the 28th. Yeah, it is at 28th again. Uh, it's Tuesday before right. February 27th. 27th. Yeah, 27th. So February 27th, 2024 will be the annual meeting. Um, and affirm the use of Robert's rules for small boards. So um, as we did last year, we affirm the use. Uh, we no longer require a second once we do that. We have a motion, discussion, and then we vote. So is there a motion at this time to motion. affirm the use of Robert's rules? Motion. motion by Mike, second. I'll second. Second by Linda. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. In your packet, everyone has received the VSPA Code of Ethics. If you could sign that tonight and return it to Chris. And if you are virtual, if you could, can you sign it electronically? Uh, sign it. Sign it. Sign it. Sign it. Sign it. Okay. At some point, return it to Chris, please. Okay. Got it. Uh, identify locations where agendas and minutes will be posted. So we post at the post offices in the three towns, at the schools, and the libraries. Are there any changes or additions to those? Oh, in the town office. Is that the, what the three towns is the three town offices? Yeah, okay. so like they send it to the town office, they post it at each um, post office, each library, and then in the schools, and then of course it's posted online. You don't have it's it was the second thing behind your agenda. Oh, nope, the next one. That's the next one right there. No, that. There. No. <clears throat> Affirm the choice of the attorney. Our attorney has been Chris Leopold. A motion will be in order to stay with Chris Leopold. I'll make a motion. Motion by Sarah. Any discussion? Any reason why not? <laughs> any reason why not to stay with him? Yeah, I mean, is there any reason why not? No, I don't think so. And if there was, we'd have to go with your second session. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Identify media sources. So we use the Rutland Herald, um, Lakeside News. Is that what pulled me this? The free yeah. paper? Yeah. I think that's it, right, Chris? Yes. A motion will be in order to authorize the administration to request and expend available grant funds for the from the Agency of Education as well as state and federal funds. Make the motion in order to turn up everything. Motion by Mike. Discussion. All those in favor? No, I Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> motion passes unanimously. A motion will be in order to authorize the board to borrow funds for the Unified 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 Union School District pending receipt of payments from State Education Fund. I'll make that motion. Motion by Kristen. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? A motion will be in order to authorize the board chair to sign director's orders and other documents on behalf of the board as necessary. Make a motion. Motion by Mike. Discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Do we, we don't have a finance committee. Are we just in case? Yes. Okay. So who would like to be on the finance committee? Tom, was that your hand up? No. Oh. <laughs> so we don't have a committee? We haven't used one. And uh, what we did in the past, uh, we have um, done the budget as a board rather than having just a committee set and do the budget. We had lots of new members on the board and we felt it was important that Lewis come and kind of walk everything, everyone through the budget together. And it seemed implicit to make Lewis go to a finance committee meeting and then go to all the board meetings. So I mean, I'll do it. I mean not, if the board a... chooses that they want to do that or if there something comes up and we you want to have them, you know, do that, we can certainly do it again, but we haven't, we didn't do it last year. Right. I mean, if you need somebody's name on it, I'll yeah. Work. All right. And someone else would like to put their name down. So we have two. Do you need a second name? Okay. Catherine, negotiations. Um, we're not, we shouldn't have to negotiate this year, but just in case we need to meet, um, Mike and I have negotiated okay. and, um, who wants to do it from Pulteney? Do you want to be from Pulteney? Okay. Policy committee. So we do have a policy committee. They meet regularly. Um, I think they meet monthly, Kristen. They're waiting to see when everyone is going to meet before yep. they um, selected their meeting phase, so. Yeah, and the meetings are limited to an hour and a half, so it's a time-bound meeting if that helps. Yeah, so did you want to do it again, Kristen, or? Sure, I can I can do that unless somebody else also well, wants we can, to. We'll try to get a couple other people. So we have yeah. maybe two people and an alternate would be great. So that would sound, month. yeah, that would be once great. Yeah, once a month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is there someone who'd like to be an alternate if um, Kristen or Sarah couldn't couldn't meet? I'll do it. Okay. And buildings and grounds. Yeah, I'll do that. So Tom, and who would like to do it with them? I'll do it. Okay. And hiring committee. This is more uh, at the SU level because historically we've kind of just been having building administrators reach out to right local board members to assess it. Yeah. So I think we can do you want one for the SU. Sure. Okay. Is there someone who wants to do that? If not, I can do it. Okay, Rebecca. Okay. Awesome. And that's for SU base, and then local will still be um, building administrators reaching out to. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think that wraps everything up we have on the reorganization. So the approval of the agenda would be the next order of business. Motion by Mike. Any additions, changes? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Doesn't appear. Do we have any public? Oh. Is there anyone that's a member of the public that would like to speak during open public session? Hearing that, we'll move on to old business. Is there any old business to come before the board? New business, Cory Valley graduation credits. Uh, thank you. I'm going to share my screen with all of you. So over the past year, 
year and a half, uh, the Corey Valley admins, uh, at, at the seven through 12 admins and working closely to uh, try to better unify uh, our schools. When I say unify our schools, look at uh, you know increasing course offerings, opportunities for our students. Uh, look at you know ways we can uh, kind of align uh, programs, uh, you know, resources, you know, things along those lines. One thing we talked about was an alignment of our graduation requirements, uh, and so in our handbook this year, we did list our our current. Uh, Corey Valley graduation requirements and also must act uh, a potential future graduation requirements. Uh, so our current right now has uh, all of our Corey Valley grads with you know, graduate with five credits of English, four global citizenship, four in math, four in science, two in physical education, one in fine art music, one in health, and seven overall electives for a total of 20 credits. As we met as an admin group and we met with uh, our school School counselors. Sorry, that's okay. the um, stubbing thing that's still coming to me. So I apologize. <laughs> I'm sharing my phone. Up. Yeah, I'll turn it off when it goes. Yep, that's what it is. <laughs> okay. I'm glad to know it's working. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so what we like to do is a Corey Valley graduation requirement. Now, this would be for the class of 2027 and beyond. So, this is be for uh, current eighth graders who are going to matriculate into our high school. Uh, so, we were shifting into four years of, of English, four of global citizenship, four of math, four in science. Uh, so, all of our core classes are under four credits. And so, obviously, within that, there are opportunities for electives uh, you know, across. The spectrum, you know, uh, we looked at, you know, whether it be dual enrollment, um, uh, you know, early college, uh, you know, AP courses, whatever that be, but there are a lot of opportunities within each of those core classes. Uh, we also looked at uh, two credits of PE, one in fire music, one in health, and then the, <clears throat> the, the addition really is the one in world language class culture. And this is in alignment with uh, what the state is uh, kind of asking us to do. We also looked at for individuals who are looking to enroll in universities or colleges, there are a lot of universities that still ask for a world language credit. And so uh, what we do not want to do is put any of our students at a disadvantage where, as we know that some of our kids make decisions you know, at different times in their lives. And so it uh, might be their junior year, they said, hey, I really want to go to college. You know, this is what I want to do. And they're scrambling to try to you know, meet certain requirements or mission requirements. So uh, by putting this as part of our program, we're uh, a lot of our students that are aligned for you know whatever path is in front of them. Uh, and then we think we still have these seven electives in there. So there still is the 28 credits uh, in there. So there's a reduction in credits, but it's just it's a, a shift uh, really from that five English to uh, to four and then to you know, brand a world language culture, which is, uh, you know, I know that uh, some of our schools had that in the past, others did not. Um, but this is something which we talked a long, uh, long time about. We thought this was necessary to really look at pathways and just making sure that uh, we are uh, really making sure that our kids are, are best prepared for whatever path they're, they're choosing uh, post secondary. So, the basic summary of shift really is just the, the, the all core classroom, the four credits, and then the add in world language culture requirements uh, for this. So, uh, we would just need. Um, uh, is there any discussion, questions? First of all, if not, uh, we would just need a motion from the board to approve either our the proposal or uh, a recommendation to stay with our current graduation requirement. And Evans, anything I've missed, please feel free. Does anybody have questions for the building admin or Chris? How is that chemistry? For the for the kids that are reading at a lower than an eighth grade level, how are we doing an alternate chemistry for them? Well, I think you know I'll, I'll ask the little bit of answer is that can maybe better answer that question as they see you know <coughs> students in placement and how they respond to them. So through differentiation, we do not have a, 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 a at least in West Rutland, we do not have a secondary chemistry class. We have through differentiated materials, the, the students can go through the chemistry program 
uh, or biology program or science program, et cetera. So we do not have a, a parallel program uh, for them. I understand biochemistry, I think it would be kind of difficult myself to say. Chemistry is a lot more math based than it is English based. Um, and if someone was that many grade levels behind, we certainly would be looking to enter them into like our intervention system or and looking at the yeah, 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 okay. yeah, got it. So we would okay. we would certainly be getting them the help that they need right. Does he do you use an alternative book for them? We actually do not use a, a, a book. For, for okay. uh, but materials, yes, we use know. alternative materials. Okay. Yes. So and I'll, I'll go with Jen and Jay said, and we in the past, and it's like cooking with chemistry or something like that. Okay. That we, um, you know, our, our science teachers have kind of, and it's open for everybody, it's not just open for, but it's kind of an alternative type chemistry program. But uh, I don't believe we're going to run that next year. And that is one of the nice things about whether it be proficiencies or standards, it does provide some flexibility in terms of how we meet those. So as, as Joe has said, we could look at a say cooking with chemistry course, while they can take it say an AP chemistry course or a traditional chemistry course still be meeting those proficiencies. Okay. So we just look at you know we're on a case by case basis or based on our needs. So I think that's really what we want to see our curriculum with really be more responsive to our students' needs. And so as opposed okay. to just make everybody kind of you know, fit in the same. That's perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions from board members about the shift? Concerns? Just informational. So some schools have world languages at the moment. Others don't and will have to fill in that slot or what's the plan for, so we, for making sure that everyone can address that credit? We all offer world languages. Just some of us had it as a graduation requirement. Mm -hmm. And as we have unified, we're trying to make sure we're all having the same unified yeah. credit. So, so and I'd like to move to that as a requirement. Okay. Thanks. And that would be interesting because if you've got kids that are already at a low grade level and they're having trouble with English, trying to get them into a different language sometimes. Well, they're already in a different <laughs> world sometimes. And then I think that's where you see the states, and that's also where you see the slash culture. There, there we do have some flexibility within this. So it, it's not as if like when I went to high school many, many years ago, um, you know, you it was a traditional Spanish class, and so we were learning Spanish, Spanish conjugation verbs. Here we have some flexibility where you can offer what's called a world culture class, which is has some language learning that's more looking at some different cultures, different you know, regions of the world, and just an exploration of that. So it does provide allow you flexibility in terms of meeting students' needs. Okay, great. Thanks. My background is um, special ed. They are classifying sign language now as a world language, and so oh, you actually yeah. have that as oh, your offering. Yeah. Oh, wow, very nice. Very nice. All right. Yeah. Any other discussion? Hearing none, a motion will be in order to accept the changes as presented for Quarry Valley graduation credits from the class of 2027 and bank on. I make a motion to do that. Motion by Linda. Any additional conversation, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, principals. That's a tough one. Thank you. <laughs> and there is one other item that we would bring to the board in May. Uh, it's around the uh, Currently, we have a scale of uh, three proficients, and there's been a, lo a lot of discussion around uh, as we do a grade conversion is in high school, because we're to apply and, uh, you know, to, to universities or some jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a conversion scale, which you all, most of you should have seen. Uh, it's not a clear cut. And so what, we're, what we've seen is that um, we've in, in inadvertently created a a lowered set of expectations for our students where a student who is just you know meeting proficiencies uh really when you do a grade uh crossover has like a b in that class and i think what we're looking at is um uh, we would like to lower what the proficiency scale would be to like say a 1.5 or to a 2 and so then students who are doing the work you know and just being proficient is great but then students who are going above and beyond and working harder would then essentially rewarded uh so you know this is something which we're talking about in may we'll have that as well, kind of put down your radar that 
uh, we have seen that, uh, that we do have graduates who are uh, graduated a, a GPA through the third scale, which is, uh, I would say, inflated um, based on where I think we just want to uh, look at how we can uh, provide the appropriate rigor for our classrooms and also uh, students are working very hard that they feel a sense of being rewarded for that as well. Um, so I think you know, we'll discuss this in May, but I just wanted to put that on your radar as well. Okay. Um, the other thing that we had I wanted to discuss under new business, um, we talked last meeting a little bit about the um, responsibility that we put on Kristen and our expectations from her, the administrative, executive administrative assistant. And you'll notice if you see the package that you don't have any warrants in it. So going forward, I'll have one set of warrants up here. Um, you receive them through your GRC issue email, but if there was something you wanted to discuss in the meeting, I'll have a copy here that you can certainly take so we could reference. Um, I'd also like to take out principal reports. That's also something we receive in our emails and they take up a lot of time to make copies for everyone to put out. Um, would there be any objection to that? And most of you I see bring your laptops anyway or um, devices. So if you want to pull something up and it would be the same, I would have, <clears throat> excuse me, one copy of that up here at the front table. So if there was a question or you wanted to reference something, but just trying to think that, <clears throat> particularly now that we've gone to one week with all meetings, um, the expectation uh, for Kristen is even higher to make sure that agendas are out, board packets are out, everyone's receiving everything. And um, it does sometimes seem a little duplicit when we have Building admin here, Chris here, to give you a synopsis or an overview of those reports. And since you do receive them in your email, that you can go back and, and read them. So if there's no objection uh, going forward, that's going to be the way packets are going to be here if you request one in person. Okay? So you can request. Yes. Okay. Not a problem. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kristen, when she sends out the agenda, uh, will say, if you'd like to have a packet, please let me know by, yeah. and there's a date there. So, yeah. Okay. Moving on, approval of minutes. A motion will be in order to approve the February 28th minutes. I'll make that motion. Motion by Kristen. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. You receive rewards through your GRCSU email. Questions should be directed to Lewis. A motion will be in order to approve the warrants. Motion. motion by Linda. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Superintendent's report, Chris. Oh, thank you. Uh, so you, you received a, a lengthy superintendent's report. There's a few items I want to uh, just review. I know I just first wanted to say thank you to the communities of Holney, Proctor, and West Rutland for continuing their support of our schools and Corey Valley by voting yes and passing the budget. Uh, it is greatly appreciated. I uh, would like to also uh, congratulate uh, and welcome back uh, Linda Smith, who was a uh, Three-year term, told me. So that's good to see you again, Linda, and welcome back. Thank you. Um, the uh, I put for informational purposes just the GRCSU town meeting results, uh, just for the other boards, and just so we can see what's there. And then there's a lengthy uh, legislative report. It's the midterm uh, legislative report. And I know that we just uh, ended crossover, which is the time where the bills basically have to get off the, the floor and you know. You know be approved and move forward. Uh, I, last week we had a BSA all members meeting, um, and uh, you know, I know we just met with some of our representatives uh, centers today. And over the past week, a lot has happened. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, things are moved pretty quickly. Um, there are obviously items that we uh, want to just keep a close eye on. Obviously, universal school meals. We're looking at the uh, the big talk right now is around the uh, proposed legislation around. Uh, Cars that be making and school choice, which uh, one bill has moved forward. That is uh, the, the one that the 
um, House Education Committee has proposed, which is, I would say, the pragmatic approach is around accountability measures, not limiting what uh, school choice looks like. Um, and, uh, you know, take a look at my notes because there was a lot in there. Um, and so, uh, one other thing that's uh, talk about also is just about the uh, workforce bill, uh, looking at ways in which we can increase uh, workforce in our schools. But just to, you know, we we know that um, the problem that we have in our schools, same problem that schools across the state of Connor have in terms of finding staff, qualified staff. And so, there are some items that they're looking at going around loan forgiveness, uh, around waiving of licensing fees. Um, you know, things along those lines just to look at, you know, try to bring in uh, uh, higher quality employees. They were talking about uh, traditional or, you know, versus alternate routes as well, but uh, we'll see where, the, you know, where these bills land. I know that when we meet again in April, uh, we'll have more information for you as well. But I am going to try to reach out to a few of our senators uh, to see if they can attend our April meeting, just to kind of give you uh, an update more from the floor. Cause what I say tonight by tomorrow might be old news, and that's just because things are moving pretty quickly right now. So, uh, well, I think our rep is on the education committee, isn't he up there? I don't want to worry the senators. Senator, yeah, Senator, Senator, yeah, Senator Williams and Senator Weeks yeah. both on the Senate House Education. So, so that's nice. We're looking at, uh, you know, we reach out to both of them uh, to see if they can at our meeting. So, hopefully, if they can. Uh, I have one question. Yes. On the school safety where it says it requires biannual options based. Do you know what options? What's so that about? options based, and this is something which, you know, we have we discussed since the beginning of the year. It's uh, So, really, what an options based response is. In a traditional response, I could say like if there's a an intruder or you know, you go to a uh, shelter in place or lockdown and, and so but an option base would be uh, if there's a situation that uh, you would you, know, you train staff, you train members to make best decisions on that scenario. Um, and so it's, it's you know, so not everyone would be in a lockdown, so staff and everybody say you know, okay, we can then move our kids to a safer location. Others, based upon where they're at, would move to uh, would stay in a lockdown. So it, it really is we have a, a variety of options how to respond. Uh, if a class is outside, say for PE, you know, obviously they're going to look at you know, what they do, how they can safely, you know, uh, remove the uh, students from the situation, and things along those lines. So there is a lot of training involved to this, but it's not just a kind of a, a one stop shop. Right. And it, a lot of it's in response to some of the things that have occurred across the country in the past year or so, just around. Uh, students are all in a school, and is there a better way to respond? And so I know that April 5th, uh, myself, Joe Arrington, and I think some other uh, members uh, of our from Core Valley and FCU are going to go into a uh, develop an emergency <clears throat> operations plan to make sure our operation plans are most current up to date. So we'll be doing that. All right. Any other questions for Chris? Thank you. It was very nice to have that. Thank you. All right. Since we have, oh, oh good. It's okay. We're going to ask, and, and and this might be too long for Louise, but I'm kind of curious how the, um, where there are bills going to the legislature that, um, that are related to pretty well the same topic as as policies that we already have established, right? So we have policy guidance, for example, already at the SU for firearms and deadly weapons at schools, right? What's the relationship between you know, if that bill becomes enacted into law, does that mean we're all just kind of it's a trickle down and we're using so it? so what'll happen? Sure, and that, I think that's where every administrator you you just kind of hold your breath and cross your fingers during legislation. You don't really know what's going to happen yeah. uh, because it, you know if a bill goes to both, you know, becomes law, then the VSBA will go through a and look, you know what adjustments are they made to make to their policies, yeah. particularly if they're on the record. And most of the policy shifts will be around the recommended and so the vsba will through their lawyers will yeah. develop an updated policy and that would be something that would come back to policy committee that they've updated say a firearms and weapons policy okay. so therefore we would move a step with them so. oh thanks and you can go on the vsba um website and i think it's probably like one click away yeah. And there's a page and it'll tell you changes if they've taken them and everything like that. There's just a little box highlighted in blue, I think. It's recently updated. Yeah. See exactly what so that's usually in real time there. So they're pretty quick about, Sue's pretty good about making sure everything's. Um, so that's always a good place just to go and talk. I, you know, I did a, uh, so in May, um, I know the Great Rail Cognia, which is where the VitCap, uh, we have been working with our administrators uh, around this and, 
I know that uh, many of you may have heard that our Secretary of Education, Dan French, has recently announced that at the end of this month, you'll be, you'll be leaving. Uh, Helen Boucher, who's a Deputy Secretary, will be taken over in the interim. Uh, but that really has nothing to do with cognitive of the fact because he was talking about this last week, and uh, it's interesting with the timing, but that's another story. <laughs> um, so there is a heavy lift that's going to be placed upon our, our administrators and our staff uh, that's, you know, to get this rolling and get into place. Uh, it, it's uh, we'll have a location, I think, in April, uh, our April meeting, just about how this uh, you know, will operate and work. It is primarily like a traditional, uh, you know, assessment, so it's not, not much different than the SPAC in terms of administration. It's just it's learning a new platform and just, I think, really, you know, along lines of, you know, accommodations and uh, certain, you know, uh, systemic uh, you know, uh, issues that we had to work through. But, uh, uh, our concern, obviously, as we look at test results and accountability, we, you know, for the past four years, we, you know, we, you know, we've been going through COVID and we've had a variety of uh, asterisks next to aspect assessments and experts and results. And now we're shifting to calling it a big cap. And I think our goal really is to look at how do we still, you know, continue to look at these scores and, and you know, make adjustments in terms of, you know, from a, an instructional standpoint, from a learning standpoint, from a curriculum standpoint. And also just uh, you know what sort of growth you know so that that's our goal. So even though we will be working with the new platform this year, we are still going to be looking at you know what this information could tell us, what, what we can learn from this, glean from this, and how we can use it moving forward. <coughs> just make sure our students are receiving the you know, best quality uh, you know instruction and classrooms on it. And we'll have more a report uh, next month um, map as well about our scores and also. Some of the things that uh, you know, Kristen, Joe, Liz, Jen, and Jay have done with their staff and what the staff are doing uh, based on these results. So. Uh, all right, I think we'll just go around the room and everyone's received the principal reports, but there's a lot of information in there and a lot of great stuff in there. So we're going to give everybody a couple of minutes to tell us something awesome that has transpired and then. Um, Someone needs approval for field trips, and I see there's a reach out for, for volunteers and coordinators. This is always a good place to shout out to your community. Um, so we're going to let Jay start, and everybody, I bet everybody knows what Jay's going to start with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, I, as my report has said, we've got a lot of information in there. Um, I, I guess I'll, I'll follow suit, right? <laughs> And okay. just say I want to give a hearty congratulations to our girls basketball team Absolutely. on their state championship. Um, uh, wonderful game uh, and their 23-0 and season. Just additional shout outs to Peyton Gway, who was named as the Vermont Basketball Coaches Association Girls Player of the Year. Uh, we can't recall the last time a V4 player was given that um, distinction. So congratulations to Peyton. Um, and also to Coach Carl Serrani for receiving the John Wooden Legacy Award uh, for his season as well. Um, I am uh, truly excited about the return of Night of the Shining Stars, which is uh, next Tuesday from 5.30 to 7 in our gym. Uh, we have not had this in four years. Um, I always say anytime we can bring parents and community members into our school to celebrate academics is a wonderful thing. So teachers have been working on this. Um, I was able to see it in 2019. Uh, I attended when I was uh, had just been hired as the building principal. So I have seen it in action. I had run a similar program in my last school, uh, which would bring in you know close to a thousand people. So I'm really happy that we are able to offer Night of the Shining Stars again. You can see also in my report. There's just a lot of different things happening, uh, including some hiring. Uh, and I did want to say, um, I usually try to pride myself on having everything all set to go. I do have to come back uh, to you tonight or ask you. Um, I was given a field trip request for June 1st and 2nd, so it's a few months away. Mm -hmm. It's not in your packet. I just received it yesterday or today. Today's Monday. Yes, today. <laughs> um, uh, it is uh, from Lauren Moisel, and it uh, is largely covered by gear up money, uh, which is through VSAC. Uh, and it's taking 20 students and three chaperones on an overnight trip to Boston. And per board approval, uh, all field trips with an overnight component need to have that approval. So um, the cost is, is nominal. We are going to be, uh, students are going to be applying through an essay. 
uh, uh, so we're not dragging everyone to Boston. We're looking at bringing 20 students. Uh, our VSAC coordinator, Lauren Moisel, and one other uh, chaperone, uh, which will not be me, uh, to, <laughs> to Boston. Um, but I wanted to, um, and I have an itinerary which I can pass around if folks would like to see it, but I just wanted to follow protocol and ask for permission for an overnight field trip. Sure, if we want to pass that around while we listen to other um, building admin, we can come back to that at the end if you want. Jay, if what's trauma-informed instruction? Sure, so uh, it's, it's, it's a real passion of mine. So one, one of the things that uh, all schools, regardless of where they are, rural, urban, suburban, uh, working with students who have suffered some sort of trauma in their background, and trauma-informed instruction is 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 uh, with the training was through the National Trauma Institute. I facilitated it, uh, and it is being aware uh, of what your students may be coming into the classroom. It's not a alternate curriculum; uh, it has nothing to do with curriculum. It actually has to do a lot with empathy and uh, working with the students. All relationship building, a lot of best practice. We have not done that in this building uh, in the four years that I've been at West Rutland. Uh, it, I got a lot of very positive feedback. Uh, it's not asking teachers to do many things differently, but just be aware of, you know, from morning meeting to how you greet your students to having a little bit of empathy can go a real long way yeah. with students not knowing what their morning started like, what their evening started like, what their weekend was like. Um, uh, we did a, a jigsaw classroom activity, which means we broke up the book and, and people had different sections to read when they came back and they shared. Uh, it was two hours well spent on Friday with uh, with our staff and they, they seemed to be very appreciative of that work. I actually did the same exercise with the admin group last fall. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Very nice. <clears throat> All right, Liz. All right, thanks. Um, my packet is also in your, or my report is in your packet as well. Good evening, everybody. Um, a couple of things to highlight um, on Friday as well. We're working with consultants, um, a literacy consultant and a math consultant. And with the grant that we are working with them through, uh, we are trying to wrap up some of the work that we're doing. So teachers from Proctor Elementary um, were using protocols to review their work to make sure that they have um, developed units and lessons that are universally designed and will allow for all students to access their curriculum. Um, there's a lot of positive feedback on that. We are also working on um, the master schedule for next year, looking at how to best serve students now that I've been there for almost a year, just trying to figure out really what's going to be best for our students. Um, and it, Jen was really great about getting us a performer, Jared Campbell. He came a couple weeks ago and was extremely dynamic, came from uh, upstate New York, I believe it was, and put on two different performances for our students. And it was just the, probably the third or fourth time since I've been there that we've all been in the gym uh, participating in an activity. And he was uh, very powerful. Lots of kids were connecting with him personally or from an, an empathy standpoint. Um, and we're just kept talking about it. We heard about him for a couple extra days after. So we're hoping that we can get him back. Um, over time. And another discussion that I highlighted in my report was through looking at our data, um, which came from our, our February uh, professional development day and just in constant communication with teachers and parents through our MTSS model, we're noticing that um, our students did some more work with fluency. And so we are, with the help of Lindsay Ryder, um, using a, uh, a piloted program called PALS and KPALS, which will partner up students to have um, the ability to read with stronger reader or struggling reader. And we're going to do that for three weeks uh, starting next Monday. And we're going to so I'll be able to report about kind of how that goes in KPALS. We're really looking forward to it. I have a really random question. So, okay. um, <laughs> what is grocery basket bingo? And I'm only asking because a lot of my friends live in Proctor and their kids go to the elementary yep. school. And I want to start trying to support more you know, my friends are good at supporting my kids' fundraisers and stuff, so I want to start supporting others. So if it's a fundraiser, it sounds fun. Yeah, so it's for our PTO. I'm a, I have a very active and engaged PTO this year and from years past as well. And a, a traditional thing in Proctor is the grocery basket bingo. So classes will be asked to bring in an item based on a theme, and then it'll run like regular bingo, and you get to go pick up your own basket as you run. So 
they're really excited for that actually. Um, it was, it's a great thing. All right, I'll get a hold of my friends. Yeah, for sure. like, Let me know what's going on. So. Yeah, okay. Friday night. <laughs> we'll be good time then. All right, Jen. I can talk. Yay. Uh, here we go. Uh, very, <laughs> we have a line. I'll be quick. Okay. <laughs> limited, limited, yes. Jen. Uh, so I was excited because one of our students, um, Cole Nace, placed first in the state for the Invest Right competition. So all of Proctor High School participates in the stock market game, and we get $100,000 to invest. Um, in individual portfolios. And so each of our advisory groups are all investing. And as a part of that national competition and statewide competition, you can write an essay that says what, why someone should invest and what they should invest in. And then they send these essays to financial analysts who grade them. And out of 2000 submissions, Cole won first place in the state. So that was a pretty amazing thing. And they, yeah, I know, it's very cool for us. Nice. Um, and he won a whole bunch of stuff, which made it great for him too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we just heard actually last week that as a part of the stock market game, we um, might have some grand champions there uh, that kids that had been invested money, fake money, obviously, um, <laughs> are, are leading in the state too. So that's really cool. And uh, Patty Ryan, who's our, one of our math teachers, is just such a champion of kids understanding the stock market and knowing about it and really trying to put it into um, an authentic situation. So awesome um, job there. We had music in our schools, which we were able to bring in a little concert for our kids and a steel drum. Uh, where kids actually learn how to play it. it felt like we were on a tropical island and so when you get the chance not right now please click on that link and feel free to listen to us play some steel drums i get it it, it was wonderful. cool wasn't it yeah, yeah. Really um and then lastly we are bringing in uh we've, we've noticed the amount of social media has just taken over our kids lives and they really don't know how to use it appropriately so we are bringing in an organization to talk to our students about how to use it and we're going to have a parent night uh, and we've invited the elementary to come up and, and be a part of that as well. Um, I do have two field trip requests. So um, our, our annual guidance trip, we go somewhere every year, we survey the kids and we ask them where they want to go. They picked Skidmore and they want to go to a North Shower book over there in the Tang Museum all in one day. We're going to fit it in. This is paid through, through Gear Up and that is on um, April 28th. So that's one of the field trips. The other field trip is our um, AP US History and AP Art class. Uh, would like to go see uh, the Met in New York, and they will be taking a bus over Albany, taking the Amtrak in, and then in New York City for a couple of hours. It is after the AP exams, and so there's uh, I'm looking to actually have an experience in the art world, and the Met obviously has history to it as well, so that uh, AP is history would be going there. And that's paid through our field trip fund, and we have an enrichment fund as well for that. That's quick for me. <laughs> that was quick for you. <laughs> All right. Christine. Hi, everybody. Um, you do have my written report, but I would just like to mention we're having our first star assembly. The star group have been working very hard to learn the song and the dance and um, create videos regarding the safe, mm -hmm. trustworthy. That'll be our. Um, focus for this first one. We had to put them together because, you know, we're starting a little bit late. And our SRO will be speaking at that assembly. Um, so it's next Tuesday at 9 o'clock if anyone wants to come down and see it. Um, we did have, we, come, we had a combination of our winter activities. Um, karaoke, we <laughs> had a karaoke uh, sing-off, I guess. And the kids are so excited about it that they're going to be planning their own upcoming. <laughs> and we do have Tracy Watterson from the Agency of Education. She leads the MTSS um, statewide team. She's speaking to our MTSS team tomorrow virtually from two to three. So it'll be really interesting to see, you know, what her thoughts are in regard to how we're doing and that kind of thing. We're looking forward to learning and hearing from her what her, what her suggestions are for us. And don't want to be a copycat, but we're having Jared Campbell come to see <laughs> us on May 1st. And we're also inviting Wells and Middletown to join us. Nice. And we're also <laughs> looking to um, have that organization. I'm not sure if it's the same one as you. Um, we're looking to have them in too for our families and our students regarding social media. So. Christine, is that the 28th? 
So it's rescheduled Sorry. from tomorrow to the following Tuesday. Yes. What time? Nine. Thanks. Chris. Kristen, what is this Four Winds Nature Program that you need volunteers for? The Four Winds Nature Program, we've been trying to get off the road for the past two years. And um, we do need the yep. coordinator. And they work with, um, I don't even know a lot about it, they create curriculum. And they come in and work in different classrooms, mm -hmm. have lessons. Um, so if you're interested, I'll give a meeting with Tara, actually, and I'll give her your name. I like how you just slid that right in. Because <laughs> you know I am, because it's a nature program. So, yeah, go. go ahead and do that. Definitely. I was a volunteer for four weeks at the, at the classroom, not, a, not the coordinator, but I did some classroom. Uh, Is that stuff. like the VINS program we used to do years ago where we did a nature, I mean, we come into classrooms and do nature programs and take them out into the Woods, uh, you know, something like that. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. They have a whole lesson plan for you. Yeah, they yeah. Have it science yeah. based, and there's a theme, oh, and there's a puppet show. Nice like, really yeah. Thank you. And the school wide go day is that something at night, or is that during the school day? Sure, it's at night. PTO is sponsoring it. Okay. It's K to three is from five thirty yep. to six thirty, and four through six is six forty five to seven forty five. So actually, that's exciting too because we used to have family dances before COVID, and so now we're at least having something to get the kids up and running. And you got to wear your knee on. <laughs> All right, thank you, Joe. Um, so again, a lot of things in the report. It seems like the last couple of weeks things have been crazy. Um, our PTO was the a group came to starting a PTO at the high school uh, when they talked to me about it. So there's a lot of things for K through six, but not much for seven through twelve. Um, trying to figure out something, you know, starting up without much money, and suggested a cornhole tournament, which we had to postpone earlier. We had it last Friday, and you know, like Jay said, we, we had parents in there I hadn't seen in the building. Uh, every team had had at least one student on it. It was kind of cool that the Monday morning meeting they put a cornhole thing to help the kids. Who want to try to be my partner? <laughs> uh, they all, whoever got it in first was my partner. <laughs> Winners bracket and get knocked out in the second round, but it was uh, yeah, we were we were hanging in there, but uh, just like Kansas. Yeah, everything I chose with the girls there pointing, they were kind of like say, "Hey, we made it further than you, but if you were at the bottom of the bracket, we were at the top." But anyway, uh, a lot of bragging rights, but it was a great night. Um, probably over a hundred people in there. Uh, had a lot of people watching it. A lot of kids. And a lot of kids talking, oh, we should do this next time and already playing sports. So, you know, like you, like Jay said, get people into the building and it's a great and nice to get you know, people back into the building. Uh, this week with a short week between, or last week, excuse me, with the snow day and the delay, uh, we had John Halligan scheduled for Tuesday. He was lucky enough for us, he was able to push it into Thursday. Um, he gave a great um, it is, it's amazing that he does, you know, just the talk. And I mean, it was for us to, you know, he asked kids not wear hats or hoodies in the, um, during the presentation and seeing those kids sitting in the bleachers quiet for 45 minutes with no hats or hoodies on. I was like really, very proud of my kids and impressed, you know, I just said, you know, and, uh, I think a lot of kids came away with something positive about that. Um, also I want to shout out a crack congratulations on one of our juniors, Cora Heyer. This summer, she started taking classes on her own. Um, she passed the test on March 8th, and she is now a licensed nurse, nursing assistant as a junior in high school. So, wow. um, you know, talking to her last week about it, very, you know, very proud of her. She was, she's so excited about it. So <clears> she doesn't know what she wants, but, you know, she did this on her own. So that was kind of great. So um, it was nice to see, you know, stuff like that. And our career cafes are, we did our third one last week, and they're getting bigger and bigger. As we go along, um, the kids are really, and it's nice. A lot of local, and even some parents coming in talking about different different jobs out there. Kids don't even realize that you know they can do, and it. it's nice that um, uh, Deb's uh, help coordinating those out there. So we have one more in May, and I do have a few out of state. Um, on June seventh, our art classes are going down to Mass Mocha and North Adams Mass the museum. That's just a day trip. Um, our seniors finally decided the dates they're going to, there we go. Okay. Uh, they're going to Ocean City, Maryland on May, May 20th to the 24th. 
And um, I'm not sure, but I'll put it in front of the board. On May 20th, our prom is in Granville, New York. Um, it's actually a shorter drive to go there than it would be to put, come up here to Rutland. So um, Mandy Springs Nursery has a barn, and that's where they're posting it. So um, I don't know if it's true in the past. I'm going to reach out again or have Tom reach out. But because um, New York State, they have a lot of, at least they used to, I'm not sure if it's still there, with kids driving. Um, what we've done in the past is talk to the Granville Police Department and just say our kids will be leaving there like around 10 o'clock and so like kind of give them a grace period and catch them after 30 that's on that. Um, <laughs> that type of thing. Okay, so did everyone have a chance to see um, Jamie's request? Any questions about that? All right, a motion will be in order to approve the request for uh, West Rutland gear up to travel on June 1st and 2nd. June 1st and 2nd. I'll motion it. Motion by Catherine. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, for Pulteney High School to go to Ocean City May 20th through the 24th, a motion would be in order. I'll motion it. Catherine, any discussion? How are they getting, they're going on a bus, Joe? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then the other trips are all while they're out of state, they're not um, overnight. So is there any concern with any of, uh, uh, Jen had two, Joe has a couple uh, being out of state, but they are not overnight. So we don't need a motion, but if anyone is concerned, we can certainly discuss that. All right, have fun. Uh, we're going to move back to Chris, and we're going to start, uh, have a little discussion about what we're offering about summer programming. As you know, we're not doing, we talked last time about not um, having contract with tapestry any longer, and so that we're going to be doing a little different um, with our summer program. So we're going to start with Joe. Joe with Chris and then no, go ahead. yeah so I, I, I'll be real quick because I know that the building have to spend more time discussing this but I know we were asked uh today being the first day of spring you know people obviously are starting to think about summer and you know they'll be here before we know it's uh we are meeting myself and Lewis uh and Lisa Madison with the admins to look at put out proposals uh, around summer programming, so each of the admins has submitted a proposal. I know uh, we did talk about uh, the shift away from uh, tapestry and the reasons why we made that shift, uh, which really doesn't impact all of our schools, just it relates to uh, uh, Proctor Elementary and West Rutland, but we, you know, it would uh, does impact our summer programming and what that takes look for. So uh, our goal is to continue to provide you know opportunities for our students over the course of summer as we look at the high school. A lot of those opportunities are more along the lines of credit recovery or you know traditional opportunities for those, those students. Uh, there are some enrichment opportunities that we've had in the past. We will be offering those. Um, but as we move into the elementary grades, obviously we start to see more of a uh, full day uh, offerings. You know where it's more just the in the mornings, traditionally academics. Uh, you know it'd be just a, you know uh, supports, and then as we move into the afternoon, it's more of a kind of a summer camp option. Uh, where you know more of the social, so I, I just want to just give you some so that a, a quick overview of what they're looking at, and then in April we can talk more about uh, what's been solidified. But uh, as these plans are solidified, admins will be sent out information to their communities uh, as, as soon as they're approved. So, so yeah, you want to uh, sure, sure. So Liz and I and Jen and I have been working together on uh, mm -hmm. because we're uh, K to twelve trying to make sure that we're hitting all of our bases here. So we we Can I stop you for a second? Yes. Are we doing it with Pulteney too? So it becomes more are you taking oh. anything from Pulteney summer programs to see if they have anything that would meet your needs that would so you don't have to reinvent the wheel again? So Linda, so I think one of the things we've all talked about is how we can look, offer uh, offers across. I think where Jay and, and Liz are talking because they've they've in the past have always worked with Tapster in the past right. five years, right. and so shifting from that uh, program, they're they're looking at how they can coordinate 
there, uh, I guess, at the afternoons and what that would look like because they don't have that. Because, like I said, the past was a, you know, Jay and Liz were offering a school option, option and then at, after lunch, then tapestry program kicked in, which really what they had nothing to do with. So I think what uh, Jay's reference right now is just more of that tapestry option. But we are looking at how we can, you know, offer program across, you know, the, the, the problem is around logistics, around transportation and getting students from, uh, say, from Pulte to West Rutland or West Rutland back to Pulte. I think that's just something which we continually talk about. But we are looking Could across. the band available? Here we have a band. If, if there's a need, yes, and yeah, I think that we, we have those options. If there's if there's a program that's being offered that we can look at transportation, and I know that we have, say, Rutland Town students who uh, traditionally it's been very difficult to get a summer program going. This year they're looking to do something with the Boys and Girls Club, which may be a, a better option for them. But Rutland Town students have taken advantage of Proctor Elementary or West Rutland are looking elsewhere. So that's something which we do look at at a, a district wide SEY okay. in terms of. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So we have polled our staff to see who was interested in working. We have also sent out uh, last week, or actually it was a week before, two weeks ago, we have sent out um, a survey to our families asking for them to fill out information because before we can gauge our personnel needs, we need to know if we're going to have students come. <laughs> so um, I've sent that survey out twice for my own building, and today a hard copy went out, and Liz and I were working on these all together. Um, I've gotten a, 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 a modest response uh, from, from folks. Uh, 34 families have responded as of this afternoon. We still have time. <laughs> yep. Um, and the vast majority are requesting a full day yes. program. Uh, some are requesting a half day program, and some have said no. I'm, I'm not interested um, and we have not put out the particulars other than the weeks that we are going to be running the program uh, which are July 5th which is a Wednesday through August 4th um, so knowing that and that summer camps are filling up we know time is of the essence um, Jen and I have worked together uh, uh, also the last few years we've offered both traditional summer school for high school middle school and high school students but also some enrichment so the last few years Jen and I have worked together to make sure that if students uh, are in need of summer school uh, we can staff that and in one of the buildings we're not trying to duplicate our services here and that if students want to have some enrichment that we have those opportunities as well so um, my hope I put a deadline for the paper survey of this Friday because it's now been out it'll be out three weeks, three weeks on Friday so we uh, promoted it as, as well as we can word of mouth we're going to talk about it as much as we can to try to get uh, uh, parents this is for the summer and I, I will admit we will start working on the fall but I've got to get through the summer first so right. Um, we'll follow the same process. We have a lot of parents who are very, very interested in an after-school program once we get back in the fall. But right now we're trying to, to plan summer and get that going. So uh, we encourage the families to respond to our surveys and so we can adequately provide the staffing that is needed for these programs. So um, uh, the staff response has actually been very, very um, positive. Um, uh, so that is not an issue. It is getting students to come to school uh, and be there with us during the summer. So tapestry in my program in, in West Rutland, it was usually around 40 to 45 students that were there for a full day. Same in as well. So we're trying to, to get those numbers. We're, we know that families are out there. The last resort that I have is we know who has signed up in the past is to then personally call those families or send an, an email to those families to say we know you've done this year after year after year in case you missed um, so we really are trying to extend offers out to families because we know it's important to have quality summer programming um, uh, both academics in the morning for regardless of what grade uh, and uh, socialization full, yep socialization full full programming uh, in a day so yeah, copy paste exactly what Jay just said. Um, I do have high hopes that we'll have some more families fill it out, even if it's a we're not interested. That'd be very helpful. Right. So, um, we yeah we have uh, about the same number of responses and um, about two thirds of what I was expecting families to need right now. So I'm hopeful that more will um, 
fill it out as well. I'm really excited for this. I do think we've got some very enthusiastic staff that are willing to work this summer. So it's just about getting the, the clientele there and, you know, next steps. I think our proposals are ready once we know how many kids will have. So. So it won't be called tapestry, it'll be just like a summer program. Yeah, just school based programs. A school based program. Mm -hmm. well, you you know? do also a summer program for kids too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we're, we're doing it the same way we've done it in the past. Uh, we're looking at, we were looking at 20 days, but because we only do it Monday through Thursday and where July 4th falls, um, it's only going to be 18 days. Um, we do, we're doing enrichment or academics in the morning from 8 to 1130. We have a half hour break for lunch and then enrichment is from 12 to 2. Um, you don't have to, parents don't have to choose both options. It can be one or the other, whatever they'd like. And, um, yeah, that's what we're doing. I have plenty of staff and over 50 kids have been recommended by their teachers for summer school. So what happens is. Uh, teachers talk to parents about that during conference time and they also get um, notices out that they've been recommended and then it's open for everybody. We also try to um, coordinate special services, nice. speech, OT, that kind of thing okay. within our time frame so that parents don't have to go back and forth. Do you guys do the same thing too? Mm -hmm. OT, yeah, we, we both run um, okay. programs. Or, yeah. yeah. And we have staff willing to do that as well. Oh, good. Thank you. Nice job, guys. Joe? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We have um, our credit recovery program is through our, we've been doing it for years, our online, our Apex. And we do have also the virtual high school program as well, if students need. Um, it's been busy the last few years with COVID, so hopefully we're starting to Pair that down a little bit. Um, in the past, we last year we did have a couple teachers lined up, but the kids pulled it out at the end for the credit recovery, the in-person piece of it. But um, and I, I spoke with a few of the staff members um, this last week and this week about. I know in the past we've done some enrichment stuff, but one of them was like, I haven't even thought about. You know, <laughs> they did it through some grants and stuff like that. Um, yeah. As far as the enrichment pieces go, so. And we're offering driver's ed during the summer also to a limited number. Yeah, so we, we found that uh, even though the uh, offering during the course of the year has really been great for families, but there are a set of circumstances which students, their staff or other uh, families just uh, didn't have access to or going to provide a summer option for that as well. And do we have a cap on what that is, that number? 15. Okay. Yeah. And so it's Quarry Valley Kids First. Yeah. And has that sent out, like, what the deadline is for that? We haven't um, put anything out yet because we're just, like, I think it's on the contract. Okay. I think for today, so we're waiting for Okay. I did have a couple of people ask about that, and I know that we are doing it because he's on the contract. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, great. Yeah, I think that's the big thing. I think people, um, parents are curious if we're doing anything, the dates we're doing anything what we're doing, the hours we're doing it, the costs to it, because people are starting to panic that without tapestry, you know, what those options are, where it used to be you could, you know, drop your kids off right in town. They're kind of looking at the places, particularly in West Rutland and Proctor. I know that Pulteney is, you know, has a program down that's working, but I know there's been a lot of panic, like in our community about like what summer, options are going to look like so that would be great when we meet in april if that could all kind of be solidified so all that information can be out and you know what those enrichment options are going to be like to middle school high school kids and that um those are offered obviously across the quarry valley yeah all right any qu other questions for principals about the summer programming it sounds like you definitely have a plan in place, and it's a lot, I know, to start up a, a program. Yeah, I commend you on it. Yeah. You know, just the phone calls alone to people, it's just monumental. So thanks. Great job. Thank you. So, Kristen, anything? You've been so quiet this evening, I keep forgetting about you. Jessica? Oh, thanks. Thanks, Lisa. I'm just, <laughs> I, have, I have a lot of 
technical problems going on. So unfortunately, I'm on my phone. So, um, okay. but, but yeah, no, all of it sounds good. And like Linda said, thank you for investigating new avenues to have summer programming. And thanks to those who are ready to go again for the summer already. All right. Great. All right. Um, Lewis isn't here for finance, so we will um, wait until April to let him tell us where we are. And we'll move on to personnel for contract recommendations. And we have um, a pretty lengthy amount. So if you don't mind, I think we'll do it um, just in um, batches in case anybody has a, a question. So we'll start with extracurricular. And we have Jeff Patch, Proctor High School varsity baseball coach, David Parker, um, Proctor High School junior high baseball coach, Kristen Brin, Pulteney High School middle school softball coach, Brian Devonis, Pulteney High School varsity baseball coach, Robert Danhauer, Pulteney High School JV baseball coach, Tony Lamberton, Pulteney High School varsity softball coach, Haley Mead, Pulteney High School. JV softball coach and John McGeehan, Pulteney High School middle school baseball coach. Did Emotion you hear Jeffrey Patch in there? I didn't hear that one. Yeah, he Did was I the first that? one. I apologize. Thanks. Is there a motion to approve the extracurricular contracts as presented? I move to to do that. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. This next list is professional hires for rehire. So they were um, one or two year um, teachers. Stephen Barnstein, Pulteney High School teacher. Aaron Welch, Pulteney High School teacher. Sam Rogers, Pulteney Elementary School teacher, and Todd Montana, Pulteney Elementary School teacher. A motion will be in order to approve the FY24 professional staff rehires as presented. I'll make a motion. Motion by Sarah. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The next list. <laughs> do we have, do we? Okay, thank you. So the next list is the FY24 bargaining unit teachers contracts. Are there any questions on those? There are three, four, Four pages. Plus one. Plus, oh, plus Dylan, plus one. A motion will be in order to approve the FY24 bargaining unit teacher contract salaries as presented. I'll make that motion. Motion by Kristen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. FY24 non-bargaining unit professional staff. Marion Ackerman, Pulteney, oh Jesus, Proctor High School, point six, student support counselor. Tracy Gallipo, Pulteney High School director of guidance. Lauren Lozell, West Rutland director of guidance. Christina Roach, Pulteney High School Dean of Students. A motion would be in order to approve the FY24 non-bargaining unit professional staff salaries. I'll make a motion. Motion by Linda. Any discussion? Why is there such a big difference between the director of guidance between West Trotland and Polk, Gallipo and Loisel? Years of service, maybe? That would be my guess. Lauren's been there a little bit, hasn't she? It also might be education, possibly. 
Um, I can look into that it's next week. Yeah, that's been, yeah. So I, I just let sure. you know. Typically, when there's a di disparity, is for the reasons Linda said, but I, I can't say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. FY24 new hires Lori Bedard, Proctor Elementary Executive Assistant, and Matthew Lanfear, West Rutland Facilities Director. A motion will be in order to approve the FY24 new hires as presented. I make a motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? FY24 bargaining unit support contract rates. <clears throat> a motion will be in order to approve those as presented. I make a motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. FY24 non bargaining unit support staff salaries and hourly weights. A motion will be in order to approve as presented. I make a motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. FY24 extracurricular um, ADs. A motion will be in order to approve as presented. Oh, I'm sorry. And Darren McIntyre, Quarry Valley Summer Drivers Ed Teacher. Um, okay, that's uh, Dave, Jacob, and Darren. Is yes. That where we are. Okay, I just want to make sure I know where we are. Yeah, I'll make a motion. All those in favor? Oh, discussion. Sorry. Oops. Pushing right along. <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Resignations. We have Lloyd Daly as a Proctor High School teacher, effective the end of FY23. Layla Brooks, holding high school teacher, resigning. Matthew Lanfear, West Rutland Custodian, end of FY23, and Barb Pennington, West Rutland teacher, uh, effective end of FY23. A motion will be in order to approve the resignations as presented. I make that motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. This is the lead request. Uh, I'd like to discuss in executive session. Okay. All right. Um, so for the April meeting, if anyone has anything they'd like to see on the agenda, if you could send it to myself, Kristen, or Chris, um, the first week, send it to you. Um, you send it to you. Send it to Lisa. Chris, Chris, or Christine McGinnis. I, okay, thank you. All right. So um, I would have known you was you. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kristen, go ahead. Um, Chris, I was trying to remember, I think it was from last meeting, or maybe two meetings ago, actually, you and Lisa Madison talked about um, the MTSS process. Was that at the GRCSU meeting you were going to? talk about that or are you going to talk about sort of progress on that for district meetings as well that, that's going to be part of the map discussion as well so that will be a next meeting Kristen. perfect okay thanks yep jay's we're going to be a recognition for tosh y yes we're going to be celebrating all of our departing staff re retiring staff yep absolutely okay um, and just uh, just a reminder that our next meeting will be the second Thursday here at six o'clock. What's the date on that one? That is April thirteenth. April thirteenth. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So All right. Six o'clock here 
Okay. So a motion will be in order at 725 to go into executive session for personnel and contracts. Make motion. motion by Mike. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Should we motion. hang out here or do you want to send us a new link? Uh, Kristen, I sent you and Jessica a link. Okay, sorry, I'm just doing everything by phone, so I only have That's one. Okay. No, <laughs> no rush, We're, we'll have a couple minutes. Okay, thanks. All right, we'll take a break, potty break, drink break, pizza break.